Hi everyone, let's talk a bit more about organising incapacities with object dashboards and queries. So we'll have a quick refresher on the capacities basics. Every single note in capacities is what we call an object. So an object is a note, but every object has a type and that type is always labelled above the title. So we have a person object here or a project object here, for example. And all of your types will be listed in this left-hand sidebar. If you've created some collections, perhaps based on the previous videos about them, some of your object types might open like this and you'll see your collections there. But something that every object type has is a dashboard. And you can get to that with this button in the top left. So that exists with every object type that you have. And you would just click on dashboard. And essentially, this is a customizable selection of sections where Capacities is automatically finding objects of this type that fit one of these things. So if you have any collections, it will show you all the collections. If you have any objects that are not tagged, you can see that. Same for any collections. If you have any queries just for this object type, you can see those. And you can also see the people objects in this case that you've recently opened or that haven't been linked to elsewhere. And with this customize button in the top right, you can literally choose which sections are useful to you. So for me with people, I would always use collections over tags. That's just my preference. So I would get rid of that section and move up collections and then things that aren't in a collection to the top. And that's then what I see when I enter this dashboard. But the good thing about these dashboards being available for all object types is that you don't have to pick a way of organizing these objects and then apply it to every other type. You are allowed to customize it, again with that button, depending on what you need to see. So this is a more advanced setup that has some queries and a different way of thinking, which I'll go into in a moment. Or you might have definitions like I do, where I'd say it's less important to know what I'd opened and more important to know what isn't tagged. Because I like to use tags for topics. So if I'm missing one, I might have missed a useful bit of information for one of my topics. So you can open your object types and choose the sections that are relevant to you and then dip in and out of this view when it's useful to you. And whatever views you choose to show will then subsequently be shown as a section on this button as well. So you can look, you can zoom in just on the not tagged items, or you can see kind of a bird's eye view of them here. I'll show you that a bit bigger here. If I want to see all seven objects, because right now I can't, if I click open, that takes me to this section, which again is in this drop down menu. Now, just to be clear, the fact that this option exists with every object type does not mean you must use it. And it does not mean that if you don't like it or use it, that you're organizing things badly. It's just something that is baked into capacities that you can choose to use if it works for you. And indeed, it doesn't even have to be applied to your whole space, as mentioned, just apply it to the relevant object types. But as mentioned, we'd come back to this one. If you are a pro or believer user, you have access to queries and queries can be considered a bit like an automatic collection in some cases. I have a video about this from a couple of weeks ago, but a collection is you manually choosing which objects belong to which collection. If you have the AI features, AI can help you with that, again, as shown in the last video, but so can queries. And what queries do is they scan all of your content to try and find something that fits a rule that you set up. Again, there's a few more videos about this. This isn't an introduction to queries. I just want to show you how it can be used in this object type. So this is a hotel query. And what I have done is set it up so that it looks for all of the places, all place objects in my space where the category, so the type of place is a hotel. So it then finds all of those and presents them to me. So if I were to remove this tag and change it to restaurant, it goes away from here, 
but I can open up my restaurants page and I suddenly have one called hotel. And that was automatic. All I did was apply the tag and it moved things from one place because it no longer fits the rules I've set up here and moved it to another because it fit those rules instead. But for these object type queries where you're looking for the results of an object type first, you'll see this option to pin a query to your dashboard. And that means two things. One, you'll see it nested like a collection for easy access, but two, you'll see it as a section in your dashboard. You've got to choose to show it. So again, you'd go to customize, but you can see that I've got restaurants and things to do and hotels here, which clearly aren't built into capacities by us. They are from my queries. And again, I can choose to show what I want to show, hide things, it's up to me. So here, whilst I have some collections for demonstration purposes, I would always use queries myself so I can put collections to the bottom and move up my query sections. And then I can see what I would most likely want to dive into quicker. It looks like this for me, it would definitely look different for you, but that's the kind of benefit of queries combined with these pages. You literally can choose what to include and where to include it. So it can all be collapsed like that, or you can just look at restaurants, just look at hotels, or things to do. So this is a worthwhile feature to check out if you haven't seen it already. But again, if you don't find that this way of working makes sense to you, there's absolutely no requirement to do that. We have great ways of exploring your content already. The search in capacities is really strong. You can find things by their type, by their tag, by the things they're connected to, just with full text search. It's up to you. And again, thinking about organization in capacities shouldn't be something that stops you working. Because if you haven't done anything in capacities, there's nothing to organize anyway. So our advice is always going to be get stuck in and sort of play with these features, either following these videos or asking us some questions and just see what works for you and expect things to change as your space does. And don't be afraid to take a different approach with certain object types over others because there's a reason we differentiate these notes. The way that I would take notes about a place is very different to how I take notes about astrophysics, for example, but they can all exist in capacities and we can use the features that are built in, tags, collections, queries, and object dashboards in a way that best suits the information we're working with and our brains. So that's everything for this installment of organizing content in capacities. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below.